Hi everyone, this is Advanced Music Theory lesson number three. We are going to be talking about triad inversions. So in our previous video, we started talking about chords and specifically triads. Uh, we covered the major, minor, augmented and diminished triads. But we're going to talk about another important concept, which is the inversion. And this has to do with how we order the notes, how we stack them in the chord. So in order to learn about this, we're going to go to musictheory.net and just click on the lessons section chords and let's click on triad inversion. So let's take a look at this lesson. So like intervals, triads can be inverted by moving the lowest note up an octave. So we can basically move notes and take it up an octave and we're going to create a different version. So for example, the lowest note is called the bass note, uh, or it can also be, you know, this is also the root at this point of this C major triad. So the bass note is the lowest note. Uh, it just so happens that right now this is in root position uh, because C happens to be the root of C major. Now, uh, when the lowest note is the root of the chord, the triad is in root position, and this is what we have here. Now, if the bass note is something other than that, that's going to change the name of the inversion. So whatever note we have at the very bottom of the chord is going to always determine that name of the inversion. So let's try an inversion. Um, so we're going to take that bottom note and we're going to move it to the top now. So we've taken that C and we've moved it up one octave. So now the bass note is an E, uh, is the third of the chord. It's no longer the root of the chord. So this is what's called first inversion. First inversion happens in, in triads when the third of the chord is at the bottom or it, if the third is the bass note. So let's listen to what first inversion of C major sounds like. So we still have that same C major sound, but it, you know, there's a certain quality to it that's different now because we don't have the root as the base of the chord anymore. So that's first inversion. Let's yet again do another inversion. So now we've taken the bass note, which was E in first inversion, and we've moved it up an octave higher. So we are now left with the fifth note of the chord as the bass line, as the bass note. Uh, in C major, that fifth note is going to be G. So now G is our bass. This is second inversion. So let's listen to what second inversion sounds like. See? So now, as you see, we now have only one more move to go, which is to bring that bass note up an octave, right? Uh, but what's going to happen now is that in the next move, that's going to bring us back to root position because once we move that bass, that bass note, that bass fifth degree up an octave, we end up with C as the bass note now. And that was the root. So the triad then returns to root position. So in any triad, which is going to be chords of three notes, we're always going to have root position, first and second inversion only. That, those are the only options that are going to be available. But remember, this specifically is for triads, which are going to be chords of three. As we learn more about different chords, there are going to be chords that are going to have like four notes or sometimes more. And 
notes that have more uh, chords that have more notes are going to have more inversions. But for now, just remember root position, first inversion and second inversion. So let me give you guys the overview of our, this lesson. So root position is going to be the position of a triad where the root of the chord is also the base. And first inversion is going to happen when the third note of the chord is the bass note. And finally, second inversion is going to happen when the fifth note of the chord or is going to be our bass note. And I want to point something else out. Uh, this is a detail, but it is worth mentioning. In a triad, the root position is always going to have, or I should say, the, you know, this major triad is always going to have a fifth as the biggest interval of the chord. But first inversion, you're going to notice in the major triad, first inversion is actually going to have a sixth as the biggest interval. And specifically, this is a minor sixth. And second inversion is going to also have a sixth as the interval between the outer notes. But this one's actually a major sixth. And if you count the half steps, you're going to see the difference. This one's going to be a uh, perfect fifth, which is seven. So C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G. So that's seven half steps. The first inversion is going to have a minor sixth, which is going to be eight half steps. And the second inversion is going to have a major sixth and that's going to be nine half steps. So seven half steps for the perfect fifth, eight half steps for the minor sixth, and nine half steps for the major sixth. So just keep that in mind. The last thing that we're going to do is actually listen to them back to back so that you start building up your ear to how different inversions sound like. With practice, you will be able to like immediately tell which inversion it is just by listening to it. So let's listen to root position first. Let's go to first inversion. And finally, second inversion. Okay. So this is a pretty simple concept, but one that's going to be really important, um, especially as we prepare ourselves for the idea of harmony, uh, which is going to be coming up in future lessons pretty soon. Uh, so just remember that the inversions are going to be important, especially because we're going to use inversions to move a little bit more seamless between chords. Okay, uh, that will be all for this lesson. I'll see you guys in a future video. Bye.